Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We got our first content release in NHL 22 during EA Access, and just like we always did in NHL 21, we are going to break it all down. I'm going to go through every card and see if there's any value and what you should do if you packed it. Now, if you guys are looking for some more content, I stream every single day on Twitch, twitch.tv slash nosleeves12. I'm probably live right now as you watch this, and if you need some more help with your team, you need to know who to choose between your X factors, join the Discord. There is 2,000 members, and we all love Hockey Ultimate Team. We're talking every single minute of the day basically so join that again link is down below all right guys let's get into the video as before we get into the actual cards and breaking them all down i want to talk quickly about live series content prime times and team of the weeks and well the new card stars of the month and plays of the year i want to talk about how they will impact the market and early on just my thoughts on them going into the year because with the new x factor system it drastically changes the value on these cards and i really don't think anyone knows including myself how it's going to shake out until ea either changes something and if this is how it is going to stay then it definitely lessens their value and i'll explain why in just a minute we'll break down all of the team of the week cards but we'll start first with just alexander barkov you see that he got an 86 overall team of the week card which is awesome obviously alexander barkov is a really fun card to use However, what I'm curious about is why should we go after an 86 overall Alex Barkov when you can chase his X-Factor card? Because right now, if you have his X-Factor card, you can get it up to 86. All of the X-Factor player cards, they started what their base overall was, so Alexander Barkov was an 85. And then all the X-Factor cards got a plus one at launch. So Barkov got a prime or a team of the week. That goes up plus one to his base overall. So his next card, whether it be a team of the week, a prime time, um, any of the other content releases, even in the event that is coming up at launch of the game, his X-Factor card will get another tier added to him, and you'll be able to pay to upgrade him. The reason why I don't know how these Team of the Week and Prime Times are really going to hold their value at all is why would you go out and spend coins to get that Alexander Barkov when you could save up for his X-Factor card and it's automatically going to go higher? Not only is it going to allow you to keep upgrading him throughout the year, he has customizable synergies. So I really, and superstar abilities, I'm not really sure why we would want to go out and get the Team of the Week Alexander Barkov so I just wanted to highlight that because the overall statement I have so far especially during EA access guys is do not sell anything no one has enough coins in any of the markets to actually give you fair value for any of the cards that you get right now I have packed the 85 John Carlson and I've actually used him I'm going to show him in action in a little bit and I really don't see why I should go out and sell John Carlson because maybe he goes for like 70k I have no idea and I don't know why anyone would pay that but why would I go and sell him when no one's got the coins to actually facilitate that so if you pack any of these team of the week or primetime cards guys make sure that you just hold on to them my next kind of theory on these they've gone to a new system where there's no more gold collectibles it's a player exchange system a lot like how madden works what that means is that throughout the year your currency is basically the gold players okay or silver or bronze whatever it may be it's players i can see a scenario in which a few weeks go by and, and you know ea realizes that these team of the week and prime times aren't offering any value to people really they're not being able to be you know, they can be used, obviously, Barkov and Carlson 100% can be used, but why would anyone spend a lot of coins and why would anyone be excited about it when you could just upgrade their their X-Factor card? Now, non-X-Factor players, obviously, that's exciting, but what I really think that it has a strong possibility of happening is what if there's a Team of the Week or Primetime trade-in, where you could trade in multiple Team of the Weeks or Primetimes that could give you more value because now there is a system in place for them to do that. That's not confirmed at all, but why would you sell any, you know, why would you go and sell any of the team of the weeks that you get early on for basically little coins when you can just hold on to them and see what happens? So guys, if you pack any of these cards, I want you to just hold on to them. And if the moment that I hear anything or I, or, you know, maybe they release a set, I will give you a, the best info for the market. But I really strongly think that you should just hold on to any team of the week card or prime time and just wait and see what happens because no one has any idea how the market's going to react. So let's go ahead and take a look at the individual cards and see how they stack up so far. All right, we'll kick things off with Michael Bunting, 79 overall, 5'11", 4. The Toronto Maple Leafs is a pure winger card, has Light the Lamp, which I do like. I think that's very a very good card for any of the wingers. I've really liked Light the Lamp because I've liked Hand Eye. I think that Hand Eye is a really important stat this year because of how much tipping is involved in the game and shots from the point. And there's very little time and space in NHL 22, and I will have a video that 
break down all the tips and things that you want to watch out for. I just want to play a lot more games so I give you a well, you know, a, a very, very informed video. I don't want to just put out whatever early on because that might not be what I think in a couple days is the best way to play uh, to give you a chance of success. Regardless of that, he's got 83 speed and 83 acceleration. That isn't back breaking right now, but it's not going to be, it's not going to hold up for very long. This would be a perfect example of a card that I would just hold on to because there's no reason to trade him in because at some point, I think that there is going to be a set or something that will reward you for having team of the week card. So just hold on to them. Not worth selling. Then we've got the Alexander Barkov with Thief and off the rush uh, superstar ability, which I actually quite like. Um, I know that I was saying, you know, the why, why get this card when the X Factor is clearly just going to be an upgradable version that you could just can keep upgrading. Until you can put these cards into the actual X Factor, which is what I thought might end up happening, it, again, it's just really not worth grabbing these cards at the inflated cost you're going to have to pay. His speed's 84, acceleration's 84. Not terrible because he's a centerman. Centerman, guys, uh, you can have a little bit slower. You're not flying up the boards more often than not with your centerman. He's got a great shot. His hand stats are all in the mid-80s. This is a very good card, and I love Thief. If you get Thief activated, this really helps him out defensively, and he's already very big. So Alexander Barkov as a whole is a great card. I just wouldn't spend the mass amount of coins that it's going to require to get him. Uh, but if you packed him, use him. And maybe be on the hunt for the actual Alexander Barkov X-Factor card if you like it. Um, but this would be a card I would wait until the actual pre-orders and the full game launches before I would sell. Then we've got the 81 Jesse Poole Yarby. This is actually a really interesting card, guys, and one that I want to try out. He's got Applesauce, which, again, is another synergy I actually kind of like. Um, I know that there's no team-based synergies, guys, but it's very easy with X-Factors on your team to get multiple synergies activated for specific cards. So this is definitely one that could be viable for a lot of players. I think among the choices of X-Factors, you know, obviously Distributor for Speed is one. Uh, then I like Thief, and then I like Applesauce, as well as Light the Lamp and Fly the Zone obviously. So those are just a few. There's a lot more, but I'll get into a synergy video later on. 86 speed, 86 acceleration at six foot four is nasty. That is going to allow you to protect the puck and fly down the boards pretty well against a lot of base card teams. Depends on how much this card is going for, but I really, really do enjoy it. If you packed him, I would actually try him out for a little while because I think that his his combined size and speed is actually pretty sick. So be on the lookout for this Jesse Pooley RV. I'm going to see if I can't try him out and let you guys know. We've got the 83 overall, Jamie Ben, six foot two with Spark. Speeds at 84 and acceleration 84. Accelerate agility is 81, as is his deking. He is going to feel really stiff. Mid 80s shooting. Uh, just an okay card all around, not bad. Uh, Spark, there's a lot of synergies out there. Spark is a very good one, though. Um, I just think that there's more important ones early on. But if you activate it, it would help him out a little bit. But I think it's his agility that really lets him down. So this would be a pass. Um, you know, I again, a card I wouldn't go out and buy. I wouldn't buy, you know, any of these unless they're really cheap. But, um, you know, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't really want to put this one on my team. 81 Christian Dvorak with heart and soul, 85 speed, 85 acceleration, 83 agility, low shooting, and is you know face offs all right. Defensive awareness and stick checking though is pretty weak for a centerman. Uh, you want to see something a little bit higher there. However, his you know heart and soul can get that up, but. This is definitely not one that you want to look to activate early on. This would be a hard pass. This is a perfect example, again, of a card that if I packed, just hold on to. And if he gets cheap enough, guys, like if you see some of these low team of the weeks going for 1,000 coins or maybe even 1,500, I would actually just scoop them all up because, again, you could throw them into your team builder packs they're your team builder sets, so it's not like you're losing that much value, and I think people are going to overlook them because if there is ever a team of the week set... This would be pretty sick. You got the 82 Josh Anderson, good size at six foot three at 226. Speed's really low, so that's uh, that's pretty tough, especially for wingers. Um, and his agility and digging is awfully slow as well. So this would be a pass uh, from a useful standpoint. But again, just a hold if you packed him. Eddie Jansen Arkins with Workhorse. If you got Workhorse activated, I mean, he's not terrible with his acceleration up at 85. But as a winger card, if you have shooting accuracy in the 70s, I'm not putting him in my lineup. So hard pass on the Jansen Arkins. Michael Backlund with Thief. I actually used this card a little bit. I liked his defensive abilities once you actually got him up and used Thief. Uh, Faceoffs at 85, stick checking 91, and defensive awareness at 89, and speed at 85, acceleration 85 as well. This is a sneaky low 80 overall card that you could get away with 
with using for sure early on. Alex Formanton, this is a nice card. If you could get him on the cheap, a lot of people are going to see that overall and just kind of abandon him. 87 speed, 86 acceleration. For anyone that is just starting out making a free-to-play team or even just a pay-to-play team and you're looking to fill out the last uh, little bit of your roster, this is nice. Now, I know I just said accuracy on wingers. If it's in the 70s, is a hard pass. If his speed is up there among the higher-end cards in the game, 87 is is right now, that I, I'm okay with that because, again, speed is the most important thing in the game no matter what. Um, and then everything else kind of falls in line. All of his other stats are kind of a liability, but like I said, the speed is fun. I'm going to butcher this guy's name, Richard Ginge, I will say. six. I'm sorry with the European name, guys. All right, 78 overall with Fly the Zone. I do like Fly the Zone as a synergy, and but even if you get it activated, his speed's at 82, and his accuracy is down in the low 70s. So uh, this is a hard pass. If this is one of the cards, guys. Um, again, if you're looking at non-NHLers, you can't use this guy in a team builder set, obviously. But hold on to him because Team of the Weeks might have some value. You're not going to get anything for him, and I wouldn't throw him into a random trading set. There's just no point. You, you're much more, um, you're much better off just holding on. Then we've got the 78 Bennett MacArthur with Protector, 84 speed, 84 acceleration, shot powers in the 90s. Once is 77, and he's under six foot though, so he is going to get blown over by the wind. All of his hand stats are in the in the mid 70s, and his body checking 75, and his defensive awareness is awful. This is a this is like a I, I actually have no idea. This is one of the weirdest builds I've seen. You might actually be able to use him, and his shot power might be nasty enough that you can just blast it past the goaltender early on with everyone having a low overall goaltender. But holy smokes, this is a weird card. I would love to try him out. I'd love to try him out. Lastly, among forwards, we've got the 78 NT Pistoni, five foot eight with booming shot, great speed and acceleration. Um, and he can get his agility up higher with booming shot. His balance is 78 though, and at five foot eight, like it won't even take the wind to blow him over. Like a like just you know a small gust of air would literally knock him off the puck. So uh, hard pass here for Inti Pistoni. Um, just. Yeah, too tough to use in this in the style of gameplay for NHL 22. All right, guys, on to the defenseman. We start with the 82, Mark Giordano, with Born Leader and Buzzing. If you get Buzzing activated, his speed isn't awful. Uh, 84, agility up to 83. I think that you kind of need to have Buzzing activated if you want to, to, to use him in your lineup because... If you're going to use someone with 83 speed, he's got to be a little bit bigger, in my opinion, or at least someone to, that's sought after. Shot is, you know, not very good. Shot power is 84. Passing is 82. And defensive awareness are in the mid-80s. This probably isn't a very, very good option. So I would, I would definitely look elsewhere. I think there are better base cards out there, like OEL, for example, that you could go out and grab. Then we've got the 85 John Carlson with Magician and Tape to Tape. Again, this is another example of having an X-Factor card this card makes no sense to go out and grab uh, because it's just going to be replaced very quickly. 86 speed, though, and 85 acceleration with a great shot at 89 power, 81 accuracy. This has been a really fun card to use, and with how like the, the point shot meta and early on is working, these are kind of cards that you that you might like, and you know I've had some fun with them early on, but I have his X-Factor card, and I'll be working towards building that up, and at some point, if his price goes up enough in the auction house at, at the launch of the game, I might sell him. So the, the high overall cards, again, I know I mentioned don't sell the team of the weeks or prime times yet but if it's a high overall one i would 100 cash in because they will drop in value so just keep that in mind and we've got the 82 mural high skin with gladiator and in reverse i love mural high skin in last year but that was his master item 85 speed 85 acceleration low 80 shooting i like the in reverse uh, ability it allows you to skate backwards as fast as you skate forwards which is awfully nice and uh you know defensive awareness is okay and his, his, his size is good too if you can get gladiator activated that kind of makes up for some of his weaknesses like body checking uh and makes his wrist shot a little bit more potent uh, not a bad card at all I'd, I'd much rather start him than uh, i would mark giordano the 81 adam blockfist would light the lamp at 511 88 speed and acceleration again another low 80s card that i would target to try and put in your lineup early on if you can get him for a little bit cheaper honestly anything under like five five k i would spend i know he's probably gonna go for more than that early on but once he drops this is a nice target because of the speed alone um his size isn't very good and his body checking is bad um and in the in your own zone that's really detrimental but early on you've got to kind of balance things out so if you get a big defenseman and then put him beside you then you'll be in a little bit safer position 
81 Sammy Vatnin with Bombarded. If you get Bombarded on this card, it makes him a lot better. Uh, speed to 86, 86 acceleration as well. Agility down at 84, or up at 84. And then Slapshot Power at 84 and 76 accuracy. Accuracy is going to be lower. Power is going to be more important on all of the defenseman cards. This is, again, another nice 80, uh, low 80s defenseman early on in the game. Adi Otama with Distributor. This is, again, just another recognition card, uh, recognizing some of the European leagues. This is a hard pass and just a hold if you packed him, and even a buy if you are getting him for very, very cheap because, again, I think that there is value in holding on to the Team of the Weeks just early on until we know. Then we've got the 84, Freddie Anderson, six foot four with Protector. Could be a decent goalie build for sure. There's no point in going out and grabbing him, but I actually low-key like his speed stat. I will have a breakdown of what goaltenders to look for a little bit early on, but this is a nice card. No, no lie, this could be a decent starter goaltender. And then 78, Isaac Poulter, six foot with wingman. Not going to be able to use him here, but uh, take a look and, uh, you know, again, hold on to him if you've packed him. Get some of the new primetime cards. We've got the 83, Matt Demo with Light the Lamp. Six foot, 85 speed, 86 acceleration, and his shot power at 86. If you have Light the Lamp activated, it helps him out a little bit with the balance and body checkings up at 86 as well. This is a well-rounded right-handed defenseman. Right-handed defensemen are a little bit harder to get early on in the year than lefties, guys. So this could be a valuable starter card for you if, uh, you know, you're just rounding out your defense for the for the beginning of the game. And then we've got the big one, the primetime 86 Steven Stamkos with Protector and the 1T Superstar ability. So again, another perfect example. I don't know why I would go out and try and get this card. 90 speed, 91 acceleration, 90 agility, and then 90 shooting. This is a phenomenal card. I just don't know why I would invest a ton of coins because it's going to cost a lot to get him. He's still a phenomenal card. When his X Factor card allows him to upgrade throughout the year, obviously at a cost, but I just I don't really see it yet. We're gonna have to wait and see when what the price is settling at. The market is gonna dictate itself, and we'll have to wait and see how people react to these. I don't know if there's any on the auction house right now. We'll go and take a look. There is one 200k. There is no way that I'm spending 200k when there's an X Factor version of Stamkos that for around that cost is gonna give me more customization options on the synergies and better. Um, the better superstar and his own ability. So hard pass on that. But if you packed him, you could definitely use him. I'm not saying that. If he sells for like 150 and above, I'm 1,000% selling him. Uh, but that's for the high end cards, guys. But again, I think that prime times are the same situation. Just hold on to them. See what that. See what happens. So guys, let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I'm curious to think what your thoughts are on the market and how these prime times and team of the week cards are really going to factor into the overall. Here's just a quick overview of my team so far i've had some decent pack luck with the x factor mcdavid got him up to 88 i'm just now investing the the really high cost to actually get him to his final form which is uh seven hundred twenty five thousand coins that's just a lot early on uh, eichel i have really enjoyed same with dry Sidle. i packed his base card and his x factor that's why i got him up we've got kucherov and crosby brayden point i haven't really enjoyed as much as i thought i would even with wheels activated We've got Barzal, who flies. And then we've got the Evgeny Malkin, Taylor Hall, Matthews, Pavelski, and then Marner on defense. John Carlson, Hughes, Jalmerson, team builder, Eric Carlson, Justin Fogg, and Bryce Salvador, team builder. And then in net, I'm using Carey Price. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. And if you have uh, any thoughts about how the market is going to play out with these new prime times and team of the week, guys. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for the most up-to-date NHL content, and I will see you later on.